You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. Alan Aguirre, host of the Chameleon Church Show, every Tuesday morning at 8.45 a.m. Central. I'm coming to you live from northern Utah, the Wasatch back. About two minutes ago or a minute ago, Lenny could not hear me, and Chris could not get online. Let's see if that's changed. Good morning, Chris. Just kidding. I was going to say, can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you good. You I look like you're you. in, like, suburbia. I mean, not suburbia. Um, where do they used to send people in uh, Siberia? You look like you're in Siberia or in the Arc- Arctic. I woke up. I was like freezing. I was like, <laughs> you know why? Like, That's because you just got back from dousing yourself with umbrella drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> is part of it. I was not acclimated. I was around the sun. Oh my gosh! I think yesterday was the warmest day we've had so far this year. It was nice. It was like really nice. I went and shot my bow in the back for about half an hour. I broke a sweat because you know that the sun up here. I'm so close to the sun, you know. All right. Doesn't look like Lenny Parada can hear us, so I don't know what's up with his rig. But so, family time. You were gone for about what four or five days? Uh, a week, eight days, nine days. Nice. Good time. Travel. Oh yeah, it's the best. I've never been. Yeah, I would. I went to Hawaii, and it's not every year, but most years, uh, Grandma and Gramps as part of their christmas present nice take us to hawaii an island in hawaii and so this year it was the big island and it was it's nice is it okay to receive christmas gifts i think so it's not the it's not the gift that counts it's it's not the thought that counts it's the actual gift in my opinion (laughs) so so did you not go see frank while you were there you didn't reach out to old frank oh no i was texting frank oh oh good different island he's giving me all the food tips he's like stay away from this you can eat this now we were texting and then uh the new moon was happening but it was it rained a lot when we were first there so we couldn't see the new we were texting couldn't see the new moon uh because of the clouds but yep he's on a different island so i mean how hard is that to get to see somebody if they're on a different island i mean that can't be that hard can it um i guess they used to have ferries but they don't that's a question for frank like there used to be a ferry but there's no ferries i mean so you have to fly fair. yeah you'd have to fly oh i had no idea like i said yeah. i've never been no it's it's i don't know the mileage but yeah it's yeah. a it, probably an hour flight or something so i wonder if lenny can hear us can you hear us lenny 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 if you can hear us why don't you pop yourself into the uh, the show? I guess he can't hear us. Well, he can Bummer. always sit there, just looking at the camera. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on with him. Um, other than that, what else is going on? How you doing? Good week? Yeah, it's good. I mean, land got back yesterday, so acclimating. But I, we discovered they don't do daylight savings times. So it was, you know, it's two hours from Seattle, two hours ahead of Seattle. So with daylight savings, it was a three hour shift, but all good. It's all good. No, our family, there's some good connecting. One of the, one of the things that I really like about our Hawaiian trips is, uh, my daughter who's 16 now, it's a thing we're up at as soon as the sun's up so 6 6 15 whatever when we're kind of like whoa it's time to get out of bed and we go for a coffee walk so we'll walk a mile or a mile or two to the nearest coffee shop and hang out for two hours it's a thing it's her favorite thing nice uh, going to hawaii so it's always good connection time it it's just a it's a complete blessing for sure all right um, I'm not sure what to do with Lenny. Lenny, can you hear us? If you can hear us, bring yourself into the program. We could we could text him. I don't think he can hear us. He or, can watch us on the stream. Or reboot. Maybe he needs to reboot. 
but he's he's just kind of stand, sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the old guy thing. He's just sitting there. <laughs> he's frustrated. Poor guy. Poor yeah, he lady. He needs to reboot. Maybe. Well, you know what? Windows. <laughs> I can't stand that. I, my my wife still has Windows, and every time I have to do something on her computer, it's like ah. ah. Yeah, I'm going to text him. I'll text him. I We have a private text uh, in this thing called StreamYard that you can use. Anyway, um, Lenny, can oh. you hear us? There he is. Lenny, you're muted. Uh, Lenny, go ahead and unmute yourself if you can hear me. If you can't hear me, you need to reboot. Their mic you, isn't connected. Lenny, it says your mic isn't connected. I don't know what that means, but. All right, he can't hear us? Mm. All right. Um, all right, so what What else? <laughs> Anything else? We're off to a great start. Lenny, reboot. Reboot your Windows PC. Reboot your PC computer. All right. Um, all right, Chris, you're going to have to carry the show because it's Tuesday morning and I don't want to trigger anybody even though it's Trigger Tuesday. Okay. Opening thoughts. Oh, oh, we got opening thoughts. Awesome. Bible answer, man. How many chariots followed the Israelites into the Red Sea? All of them, a whole bunch of them. Does it actually say? It does. Is it like 200? It says 600, but it says. Wow. That's so I've been, I, I've discovered a lot about chariots this week. I went on a, uh, you know, there are chariot nerds in the world. Did you know that? People mm -hmm. whose life work is to study chariots. No, I had no idea. I didn't know chariots was a thing. Yeah, of course it is. There's a, there's a thing for everyone in this world. So like, so it says the scripture is it Exodus 13 or 14, wherever, wherever it's recounting it. Pharaoh's heart's hard. The Lord says he's going to allow the Egyptians, Pharaoh and the Egyptians to follow them. Why? So that he can be glorified. And it says 600 chariots. But wow. it says it says chosen chariots. Ooh, so this is top tier. Yeah, it says six hundred chosen chariots and all the chariots. So six hundred chariots. Oh, so I was right. I said all of them. Yeah, you were kind of right, but it does it calls out a number six hundred, and it says six hundred chariots chosen. So these guys, these chariot riders, they were kind of like the Levites. It was hereditary warriors. Oh, wow. Related to my thoughts in Hawaii because they had this whole warrior system, you know, like, so like you, you didn't just be like, I want to, I want to join the army. I want to be a chariot rider. Right. You had to, it was, you had to it be was, somebody. It was aristocrats. <laughs> yeah. And you couldn't just say you had to, it had to be in your line. So it was the wealthy. It was a certain class which is also why the pharaohs had to train to ride chariots and shoot air. it said it said uh some of these dudes they could related to your archery comments this morning they could shoot a bow on a moving chariot at yeah. 25 miles an hour and hit targets like these guys were dudes. it's a thing it's a thing and so it's talking about the chosen meaning they were basically the pharaoh's guard wow so, so not 600 600 chariots there's discrepancy on if there were two riders or three and the three was elite like so it was a guy focused on like a and like then, a and then, and then two archers an archer on either right, side of them like a page yeah wow but they were so they were the they were the elite chosen dudes that he's sending go and then all meaning not every chariot in all of egypt it was like the ones available you know, in the city, but, but estimates say it was probably a couple hundred. Wow. So then, okay. so then not only is the Pharaoh being wiped out and the army, but the noble class as well. Good point. 
that's but it. I, I, I love, I'll, I'll wake up in the middle of the night with passages like this and go, wait a second, because here's what I like to do, which I know you like to do, the cinematic. Let, let's get the cinematic scene. Yeah, I see. That's happening. how I see it, too. It's it's like instead of the felt board, oh, the chariots followed him into. Oh, yeah, no, I, I'm the water and it shows him crossing a stream. So now I go into dark, uh, a dive on the Suez Canal because that's where they think it kind of was. Right. Um, sea of Aqaba. Yeah. So there's Aqaba on one side, Suez Canal on the other of the Sinai Peninsula. Right. So they're not crossing like the main Red Sea; they're ca- no. crossing this channel. But still, the geography the, of this, the geography of this cha- of this channel, the, the canal, the Suez, whatever, average depth of a hundred plus feet. Right. So here's what they're saying: the Sea of Aqaba, where they cross, and there's actually pillars erected on both sides of the banks. Uh, Ron Wyatt did a lot of work there. Bunch of the rude awakening people have been out there, and it's open to the public now. It wasn't five years ago, but apparently, where they entered, there's a pillar, mm-hmm. a monument, and all the locals know about it. And there's one on the other side. And apparently, at that location, there's an actual land bridge. Mm. So it's not that deep. It's all yeah, it's all in there. It's 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 fascinating stuff that's been uncovered in the last 10, 15, 20 years. Okay, well, let me give you my fake news. What I oh, read. okay. So, so what I read, it's talking about the maximum depth in this channel is like mm-hmm. 200 feet, but average is 100 feet. And, and it's saying scripture talks about walls of water. So if it was 100, average had depth of 100 feet minus the land bridge, you'd have these 100-foot walls of water, right? Yeah. Like, it, it's not like a stream waist high. It's like no, no, no. Story. It's like 10 stories. It's enough what to a, come down and drown everybody. What a freaking sight, man. I know. Okay, now you say, okay, 600 chosen plus maybe a couple hundred. Let's just take 600 chosen. Average length of a horse, eight feet. Three foot diameter wheel. So you've got, you've got a, you've got a five foot say length of the chariot plus a foot or whatever to the horse eight so you're talking 13 14 feet but if they're following each other maybe they're riding in series who knows how they how they did that let's just say they were lined up like a traffic jam 600 at 15 feet each is 25 football fields yeah 1.7 almost two miles that these guys israelites are crossing this sea which is probably 10 miles yeah whatever. Like, it's, like it's a five to seven hour walk with children through through this and cattle yes and cattle and herds. So, they're, so they're at least five hours ahead of the chariots wow For maybe 10 maybe 12 right it's happening in the middle of the night when the chariots enter the chariots don't just like all enter at once think about that they got a 25 football fields of chariots nine thousand feet coming in plus all the chariots so they're in the red sea two miles two and a half miles picture an la freeway traffic jam two and a half miles that's probably what that's probably what it is looking like maybe they're flanked who knows but i I just it just it just captures me like because when you paint that scene of the power and the might of god going from oh our backs are against the wall oh moses you idiot you brought us i knew we should have stayed in egypt yep. you crazy you crazy leader who voted for you, you crazy levite like we should have just went back and 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 i thought oh Mo, was moses wimpy well i reread it this morning it says he had confidence right he's like nope the guy, be silent the lord will fight for you the guy Stay was an strong. egyptian noble and he was a giant killer Raises his arms, yeah. raises his staff. The waters go. I mean, what a sight! And you just be like standing there. Oh, I shouldn't have doubted. Now you go in, and then you turn around. You're on the other side, and you say, "Oh, we forgot to close the door. We, we left the door open." Here come the chariots. You see a two-mile-long stream. Like, oh, we're dead meat. And then seeing that carnage. Yeah. 
I mean, it just, it just like, oh my goodness. Then you got all the women with tambourines singing the song. Yep. And there's a, there's a line in that. I read it this morning. There's a line in that song that references the chosen. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know the original language, but I need it. I need it. That's my next study. Let me read it to you. See what you think of this. Is it Exodus 14? the song I, I believe it's around 14 or 15 yeah uh check out this line exodus 15 is a song you know my album 1518 ministries yep. walking album 1518 yep. is exodus 1518 yep. the lord will reign forever and ever yep uh, uh, uh hold, on, hold on hold on here it is it is What a song this is. Okay, here it is. Exodus 15, 4. But let's go to back to three because it's an amazing line. The Lord is a man of war. Yeah, yeah. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea. And his chosen officers wow we're sunk in the red sea so that word chosen i caught that i never caught before that's talking about the, the, the chosen chariots class. and then the chosen officers wow so the guy that the, the leader who is anti-lord anti-christ anti-moses mm -hmm. anti-semite has officers he has chosen that he sends and his elected officers his people he surrounded with himself and put in charge so the land gets decimated, Pharaoh gets decimated, the firstborn gets decimated. Then we've got the army and the noble class. That's a lot of, yeah. and their gods. It, it just, it just feels, I'm just like, oh, and this is our God. And that's supposed to depict the, Egypt, the Egypt in our heart, the Egypt in our life, the Egypt in our mind and how he came and delivered us from all of that. It, I mean, there's down. that whole, that's, what, what's a, um, Boondock Saints, symbology, <laughs> right? That's what that's supposed to depict. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the Gentile, the flesh, our life and sin before Messiah, and then Messiah comes and he rescues us, delivers us from all of that. That's well, a big, here's, big I mean, uh, uh, Natalie says it, Hebrew Bible says elite commanders. Wow. But but the idea like these were this was yeah. lineage, Top this class. was yeah. nobility, this was training. This is what they do. This is what we do. We are trained to destroy you. Wow. And he wipes them out with water. Sheesh. I love the Narnia, Prince Caspian, when they when the the river wipes out the whatever that people group the tell the talisman or whatever mm -hmm. and they and it breaks the bridge but the water turns into like a human figure and then comes down i love that, that that's not good. lenny can you hear us yeah we but you, you we lenny. cannot hear you you lenny can you hear me lenny okay reboot your computer okay yeah reboot reboot and come on back Tech support. This is Alan. So, like, oh, what's amazing is like that. I did that. God doesn't change. That is the same Lord that's on the throne now and yeah. will be forever. Who has is has who is staying his like he kills Egyptian armies with water, and he's being merc he's being merciful to us until the time of the Gentiles comes to an end. And not only that, he's inviting us into it, and he's inviting us to show us we love him by obeying his commands. Yeah. And, I, and it's what, just like, oh. And what Kevin's saying in, in uh, YouTube, and then the pillar of fire. Remember, God moved. Well, it was the pillar of smoke, not fire, I don't believe. Or they were both. Both it, it the pillar. Both, it most of them, he comes between the Israelites and right, the so Egyptians. Right, so both pillars go from the front of them, and they go from behind and block them between the two. Yep. You know, these are angels, these fire and, and smoke. 
And then you got to remember, there's also the, the the destroying angel that was sent with them in the desert. That God said, "Don't, don't, but don't make that angel angry because there's no repentance in him." And he ends up wiping them out, the entire generation. It's like crazy. Oh, that's not God's not like my Muppet voice. God's not like that today because of Jesus. Have you read Revelation? <laughs> Do you not do you not know that Anai and Sapphira lied and he killed them like they just died right there in mid sentence? It's like yeah, it's the same God. So you either believe he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, or you don't. Oh yeah, but Jesus, no, it doesn't. doesn't no, it's, it is or it isn't. God, because his righteousness, there has to be judgment. I mean, be, otherwise. See, what they're not reading, or what they don't want to read, is the other line, which is, Jesus is coming back to judge the living and the dead. And he's going to test and judge your works and your words. I mean, how do they miss that stuff? Or why do they ignore it? Do they think they're going to be able to con God? Well, I'll, I'll, when I die, I'll have that little conversation with him about how I'm okay. And how what I didn't do was all right, because we're not under the law, or because of grace, and because of Jesus. Like, they're going to have this parlay with God. No, he's judging you. I don't think it's not like a regular court where you have a lawyer and you get to defend yourself. Your life, the works and the words that the works that you did and did not do, and the things you did and did not say, that's the evidence. You better make sure your selection is approved. Yeah, it's because he's given us, given them over to a delusion. I know, second Thessalonians. Oh man. Good, so good, that's uh, what, that, that's good what stuff about, the, about the Egyptians. What's that? That's what I've been thinking about. And so now I, I was like, man, as I was reading, you know, I'm just surfing the, the frosting of Wikipedia. But like, oh, my gosh, there's a whole thing about chariots in the Bible. I mean, you got Ezekiel, you got mm -hmm. and, you know, and, it, and it's so symbol symbolism of nobility. You know, he rides the wings of chariots uh wins you know some nobility honor reigning but then also warfare some trust in chariots some trust you know like there's a whole thing that i think the to dig into in scripture yeah yeah there's a bunch of stuff about chariots yeah and, and then remember yeah the um elijah yep see that was his normal and they asked the Lord, op Lord, open up my servant's eyes so he can see. How would you like to see that? This is why I mean, men was, faint. Was the, prayer, was the prayer like, was it a merciful prayer? Oh, Lord, thank you. Will you allow him to see what I see? Or was it like, <laughs> God, please open his eyes. This is driving me crazy. Right, right. I know. <laughs> please. Please but that's why they say see. men faint and they almost die when they see these things because it's so otherworldly. It's like that fourth that fourth wall in movies is they just break that fourth wall. It's like, oh, that's always been right there. I just couldn't see it. Yeah. See, that's the thing that we don't understand because as humans, we do this, right? But there's angelic and demonic activity within arm's length of us the majority of the day. We just can't see it. Some of us can discern it. My wife can see it. She sees more than I do. But I can, you know, I can discern it. That's why we're a good balance. But you know what I'm saying? It's within arm's length at all times. The spiritual war. Hmm. I think, and it's his mercy that we can't see it. I think that's mercy. Because even if you could handle it, it's just, just too much going on, man. Remember when... Uh, Saul went to the Witch of Andor, which is a total like Narnia, Lord of the Rings sounding thing, right? The Witch of Andor. That's so <laughs> Narnia. That's so that's that's Lord of the Rings. Yeah. When King Saul went to the Witch of Andor. The Andorian witch. Yeah, right? So he saw all this activity. That story, man, that, that I mean, that that story blows my mind. There's there's so much broken theology right there. Like like wait wait a second uh okay he's wait, wait there's a there's witches <laughs> oh oh and wait they, the the king who was anointed broke the rule that he made 
Yep. To see a witch. He sounds like a liberal. And, and then he said, I want to see a dead guy. Yep. And she's and then, able to not and, only communicate. And then, but... and then the witch brings back a prophet. Wait, 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 what? What? There, there's so much mind bending in that yeah. story. I'm just like, there's, oh my gosh. There's What's very happening? little. There's very little room for uh, Christianity in, in a lot of this and, Bible and, stuff. And Samuel, Samuel's like, wait, where is Samuel? And why does he come back? And, and he's like, what are you doing? Could he have agreed to this, or he had no choice? Like, I have to be beckoned by a witch. I have to say yes. Like, there's just so much. What yeah, in the there's world a lot of that going stuff on? going on. What is going on, Alan? It's a lot of stuff going on. Hey, none of that's changed. That stuff is still happening. It's still going on. Yep. It's not like and it's and I don't, I'm not saying it's an endorsement of witchcraft. I'm just well, saying no. It's just that. Well, I mean, natural. God, God, you got. Let's remember, because of his disobedience and and re, and he reneged on his deal with God. He's now Saul. plagued Saul. or Saul did. Saul. He's now plagued or cursed with a with a with a tormenting spirit that is driving him mad, and and David can soothe it through music. At the same time, when he joins the prophets, and as soon as they enter the the the, the parameter of Bethel, the prophetic spirit falls on him. They're now naked on the in the ground on the laying on the ground naked, prophesying. Put that into your theological pipe and smoke it. They find him naked and laying on the ground, prophesying. Oh, is Saul part of the prophets now? Remember? So it's like that. So that prophetic spirit was so heavy on Beth El, right? House of God, that just didn't matter how jacked up you were. The closer you got to it, the more that, that Holy Spirit was just whoosh, saturating you. Man, think about that for a second. Mm -hmm. Um, there's just so there's all this activity going on, man. Um, man. Yeah, it's just a, it's just if we don't consider the Holy Spirit and and the text and the narrative, you know, it, it's it's gonna it's gonna really get in the way of things. Lenny, are you hearing us? And Lenny, can you speak? Can you hear us, Lenny? He can't hear us. He can't hear us. Lenny, can you hear us? No. Like we're we're one step up from the public access channel from the eighties. Oh, I know, right? Public access television. <laughs> You're muted, Lenny. Unmute yourself. Can you hear me, Lenny? Can, hey, yeah. Can well, you hear us? I can hear you. I can hear you. Well, you know what? It's not my mic. It must be my. Uh... Well, it's your computer. Your so, mic's not just going to stop working. Yes, I know. Yeah, it's I, your computer. I went the um, computer audio and tried it on that. I could hear you fine, but then I couldn't talk. We can hear you and you can hear us. It's a, yes. it's a PC, dude. Oh. <laughs> it's inevitable. Yeah, I'm, I'm back on my computer audio. Cool. So anyway, where were we? Um, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff going on, and, and and to think that that's not for today, or that that doesn't happen today. I mean, why would God just? Oh, well, He doesn't have to do that now. He did that all that stuff back then because He was, you know, building something, the church and His people, and you know, it's just it's weird. They have they have to see. I think they have to distance themselves from it because. It's too frightening for them. And they don't know how to navigate it. And since they have no reference experience in that realm, you get what you get. Whenever I've done spiritual exploits, a lot of Christians then they, they defer like the Pharisees and start calling it demonic because they have no reference. Um, my God doesn't do that in my life. I'm a Christian. I'm a good Christian. It's the Korah thing again. God's with all of us. Uh, I'm a good Christian. I've been a Christian a long time, you know, and... I've never seen that, anything like this before, so it can't be God because I don't have a reference for it and I'm godly. That's exactly what the Pharisees said. We're the, we're the gatekeepers, the Pharisees, and we can't do anything the prophets can do. So because you can and you're not one of us, you're demonic. <laughs> it's really convenient, right? So they have no reference. It's, it's, it's too terrifying. 
when you have it, no one ever expects to have a cross section, an intersection with the supernatural. And so when, they, when, so when God does that, it freaks them out. And, they, and it's a lot easier to call foul because if it is God and I have no reference, then that shows a lack of deficiency in me. And well, humans just aren't going to do that. Mm. But then like, like, like I say, I've never physically have raised the dead. That doesn't mean it can't happen. It just means I haven't gotten there. That's no reason for me to believe that it can't happen or that, you know, or that it can't happen because I haven't done it. What am I, some like super, some special dude? No. <laughs> it's just the, the weirdest. It's such a, it's, I don't know. It's a really troubling place to go psychologically. And then it, and then it's, and then they, and, and, and that seeps into their spiritual um, stuff too. If, when, if, if, and when you think like that, it's, um, it's disturbing. It's very disturbing. I mean, why would you not? I read the Bible from zero, from, with no reference experience, no denominational restraints. And in my Bible said what it said. And I'm like, I've got to figure out how to be this guy. I got to figure out how this, how does this happen? I've got, this has to happen in my life. Because my leader said so, Jesus, how do I get there? So what's, what's the formula? Here's the formula. And then, oh, it works. It's so weird. It's weird. I'd rather believe it and know it to be true and not be able to do it than just go, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. That's not logical. I mean, we've got Simon the sorcerer. He's a real sorcerer. And he wants the Holy Spirit, and I'll buy it. I'll pay for it. Give it to me. I want to I be able to do what you guys can do. Yeah, that was no good. And, and that's in the New Testament. Yeah. I mean, well, Legion, Jesus, Legion, casting out demons and 2,000 pigs running down a hill. And then what's the, what's, the, what's the demon say? It's not our time yet. You know the rules. There's, there's rules of engagements, Jesus. It's not our time yet. So you can't do this. So put us in the swine instead. Because they don't want to go into the dry, waterless places. That no man's land that Enoch talks about. Oops. It just goes on and on. We can do this all day. <laughs> oh, welcome, first time viewers. Like, subscribe, share, block, whatever you want. Block. <laughs> That's what we should start saying. If you don't agree, be sure to block us. That's right. Yeah, Unlike, desubscribe. Tell everyone we're horrible, please. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So what else? What else is going on in your life? What other questions do you have? <laughs> what other Bible man stuff do you got? So you heard about Mike Knott. Most people don't know who Mike Knott is on this channel or in our in Chameleon Church. Mike Knott was, it's the only guy I can actually say he was one of the original Christian rock pioneers that I, could, that I actually liked and respected. Well, for what he did art-wise, even though he was copying, like, Iggy Pop for the most part. But, you know, he pulled off some stuff. Uh, he died last week. I've had a week to deal with it. I found out, like, the day it happened, because the guy, he's been uh, one of his band guys for the last 15 or so years, is a friend of mine. And um, I've known Mike for a very long time. I met him in the 80s. We hung out a lot in the 90s. Uh, I just, I, it's just fascinating to me how the Christian, how, the, how these Christian music people are like just glazing over the fact that he was this raging alcoholic and how somehow that's okay. <laughs> it's like really kind of bizarre to me. I don't mean, I hope he found peace before he died with the Lord. It's hard for me to believe that he did, but you can't publicly tell these people that um, he's probably not resting in peace right now, people. The Bible yeah, is, he... Bible has rules. He was, what? yeah. I don't. I don't know if you sent me the the news or. 
I didn't realize how young he was. I mean, he was 61. I thought he was old. So most of these other guys, like, um, like, like the guys from Undercover, they're like six, seven, eight years older than me. Mm-hmm. I was. I thought he was in the same group, six, seven, eight years older, but he wasn't. Uh, he's he's aged here. Now. Yeah, he's only like fourteen months older than me, which is shocking. But because I'm, I go back in time and I think about all the stuff that we did, like when he, you know, when we were on Blonde Vinyl and just all that different stuff, the Aunt Betty's and how he was less than two years older than me when I thought he was. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Oh no, he just he, he like um, when I was a teenager and heard him, I was like, oh my gosh! Like he had he had big influence on me and my crew too. Just like scattered few. Like I, I like liked his things. I see, saw him live. I don't know seven or eight times. I talked to him a couple times, met him, and but I, but when you're a teenager, like uh, you know, ten years difference is always is, is it's yeah. You're like, oh, he's an old guy, but yeah. like, no, they're like actual closer in age than I thought. But yeah, he put out some good I, stuff. I mean, like he was he was doing really cool things, and then um, you know, had a troubled past, of course. I didn't know you were on Blonde Vinyl. Yeah, we signed to Blonde Vinyl for uh, the second job. Our second version of Jawbone was done with, uh, with Blonde Vinyl. And then I the guy, and I, did, I didn't know his relationship to Tooth and Nail like then. I didn't know like I, I don't mean, think I didn't was, know he had worked with Brandon to that extent. He was kind of an entrepreneur, like yeah. He, he got he got fed up with industry, so he started Blonde Vinyls. Like we're going to saturate the market. Like it was a it was a plan. Yeah. Like oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> that actually turned out to be Tooth and Nail's role. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we were on Blonde Vinyl um, because. Uh, that first record time, the first time we did Jawbone was an issue. And so we did it with him. And then the guy from the first album showed up with all his legal mumbo jumbo. And so he had to cough up the masters. It was, that was a mess. It was such a mess. Yeah, what, I guess when I was reading, you know, the NPR article that they did on him, which, which shows something. A second one NPR, came out too. Yesterday, another NPR, one came out. NPR is writing about Christian alternative or a, I mean, yeah. he, he had some influence. That's why um, I'm saying he's like one of the few guys I can usually put the word pioneer to. I don't, I respect what he did and what he, what he was doing and where he was at more than, for example, that, that other band. Yeah. But here, here's what's interesting and sad and who knows. Like if he was an archetype in a way of King David, a psalmist, uh, someone that could express what was going on internally, externally, positive and negative. Had had a dark side for sure. I think he was divorced, right? Yeah. Um, so the, a, a trail of chaos in his life. He was a but new who grandfather. Knows, who? Yeah, but who knows in the last days what's going on or what was what was where was he with the Lord? Right. But it just goes to show your art doesn't save you. I mean, it doesn't matter the influence you had. At the end, we all go back to dust. We all go to the grave. Our days are numbered, and the importance and seriousness of leaving a legacy and bearing fruit, and you know, so there's like a, there's like a human honor thing happening of like, man, he did some cool stuff, but like, man, I wonder where. I wonder where, wonder where he ended up with Elohim. You know, I this brings, where he, you know, you know, this brings up the whole issue of just how the Lord's shaking the church, and you have all the protagonists out there. They are just everybody's brutalizing one another. It's sad to see, and yet at the same time, people got to be held accountable for the sins that they've been hiding, and yet it really brings to light the scripture that Peter talked about, you got to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It's an everyday thing because once somebody falls, we write, like you said, people write them off. You know, that, that's just it. We don't know. But he was really adamant about the fact you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. And, and, and I, and like, like, you know, like I said earlier, and like Chris said, I don't know, 
what happened in the last moments of his life. I don't. I just right, don't. right. I, know. I I know the life he lived for the last thirty years, and it wasn't right biblical. Um, right. But um, he was my friend, right? And there was a high level of mutual respect between the two of us. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know you. I've had to do a lot of personally. Like I've had to do funerals like that. I'm sure yeah. you have too. But and we and we would and we would talk about it. I mean, right. as way, as far back as '95, we would talk about it. And and he knew that he had a problem. And but you know, but anyway, all that to say, I you know, I had a friend die last week, and I've had a week. Yeah. He keeps. I keep thinking about him. I, I don't do that very often. That's why I guess why I'm bringing it up because I don't think about that. I mean. I just don't. I, I have a. I've I've asked for. I think the Lord has a grant has granted me a a different perspective on life and death, and 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 I like that. You know, it's not like I mean I know I know way too many people of faith when a relative or a friend dies they they just they lose it. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like I that confuses me. I I don't understand that. Did you not know that your 90 year old relative was going to die and that they were already 20 years over the limit? It's like, how, how could it surprise you and how could it impact you so, so much like that? You know, where they, they start losing faith and stuff. I've seen it. It's bizarre. I don't understand it. You know, um, Chuck Pierce has a very healthy outlook on death. And I've watched that for the last, whatever, 15 years. And I want I want that type of perspective, and I believe I, I have it or I've received it because of the way my dad and what happened. I was live when I found out my dad was going to die, and I just went, "Hold on a second, turned around, get a grip, turned around, and kept on going." You know, he, I'd hit stop and run. No, it's that's just part of life. I don't want to die, um, but. It, but it's so it's weird for me to to be think for him to pop up as often as he's popped up the last week. I haven't seen him in a long time. hadn't hadn't talked to him in a long time. But it's it's just weird to me. So it's got to be something, right? Um, he's close to my age. He's uh, he was a, he was a colleague. He was part of our you know the whole the deal we were involved with. Um, if anything, it's to encourage you to really make sure you're taking care of your business which is the word we got in october of 19. you know enough you know start adulting you've got to take care of business you've got to make sure you're doing everything you possibly can to stand firm you know and after doing everything you can stand it says you know making sure your selection is approved making sure you are known by him because you know, it doesn't matter if you think you know him, because I know a lot of people that think they know him, the whole Cora thing. And you know what? He, he, just, he just doesn't. We'll be right back.
for some reason my coffee didn't go on, so <laughs> I'm doing it right now. Um, here's how you. Here's why. I mean, what I mean by he doesn't know you. If it, it, it's, it's all going to be based and determined on your life and your lifestyle. How do you determine whether or not he knows you or not? Well, obedience is going to be a really, really good indicator, right? If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And that's how he, he, he knows those, right? He goes, I only know those that do the will of my Father. That's what Jesus said, All right? This is an Alan Aguirre thing. Jesus said that, I only know those that do the will of my Father, and my sheep know my voice. Well, what is the will of the Father? John 15, the will of the Father is to bear fruit, and how do you bear fruit? Is by keeping the commandments and being obedient to his Torah, to his instruction. And so our obedience is how he knows us. He knows us because we're obedient, because that's the will of the Father for us to be obedient. If you're not walking in obedience, if you're not keeping to the covenants, that's where that gray area comes in. That's, where, that's, where the, that's why it's a question, because the majority of people that call themselves Christians don't do that. I'm not to judge. I'm not saying that my friend isn't, in, isn't with the Lord or at peace or nothing. No, what I'm saying is I don't know. I only know his life leading up to that point. Um, if, he, if he knocked on my door, I would give him a drink. I would give him food. I would give him a place to stay. I loved the man. He was a friend of mine. Um, and I, I just, what was, was it Paul that said, I just want all of you to come to the full knowledge of Messiah. <laughs> you know, that's all I want. It has, it's, nothing, it has, it's not an elitist thing. It's not a I'm better than you thing. It's the heart of God. I just want you to come into the full, to walk in the fullness. Because it's so much better to walk in the fullness. Uh, and it even says how blessed your life will be here on earth. You won't die prematurely. You'll live your full term of life. Because it's the part of the blessing of obedience is a, 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 a good life. You, your son, and your son's son. So, um, Chris, you've got somebody, you've got a fan over here asking you to suggest and you talk about... Um, Your experience in the city of refuge? You're, you're muted. Yeah, Frank in Hawaii, he, he gave me a tip. He's like, go check out this place called City of Refuge. That's not the Hawaiian name for it, but it's this uh, state park beach, but it's like a historical. Uh, I don't know what you call it, heritage site, but it's where and we, I, I heard this a couple times too. Um, they have the uh, Frank help me out in the chat. If you know what I'm talking about, they had it, they had old law, like, it, like, like, so if we are talking about, um, Torah, Torah, the law that the Hawaiians had a law that like the, the old guard law the rules such as women couldn't eat with men you know like so there was all these rules that the old guard had uh of law um the ways you did did society um which is interesting because we talk about i've been thinking about this this week too alan and lenny where we talk about uh cain and abel and there was an understanding that you made sacrifices. So there was law, there was some sort of rules of engagement before the law was written down. And so the relating to the city of refuge, it was this place where the chiefs, it was for the chiefs of all the tribes. They would come and make peace. They would come and negotiate war, the rules for war. They would, it was where the, where they would come. But, um, to meet, negotiate, and it's a beautiful site. Like it's like a white sandy beach, tropical. I mean, it's just like, oh my gosh, this is a place where the nobility went, and look how peaceful it is. You know, they had they had fishing ponds and all this stuff, but they have this wall. So it's like this wall made of lava rock. Um, 
10 feet high in places, 18 feet deep in places, and they called it the city of refuge. And the rules were for anyone in the area on all the islands, if they had broken the old law, killed someone unjustly, done broken some rule, they could flee to this city of refuge and be absolved by the priests and go back to their home. And if they made it, if they swam or somehow survived the probability of waves and ocean and made it to this land behind this wall, they were safe. And so what Frank was, what we were kind of talking about is like, how did this old, what would we call them, Gentile, non-Israelite people get a concept of the city of refuge? Hmm which is also in scripture. And so it was just really interesting to walk, spend time on that plate grounds and just wonder, and you know, they've got totems and statues and I was binding those as I felt appropriate. And it's like, man, it's so interesting how humans create religions and rules and law. And it could be so close to the truth, but yet not, or was this a distortion? Where did they get the concept of city of refuge? Um, and Frank says a place to run to similar to what Moses had set up. It's just really interesting, interesting mm-hmm. thinking about how cultures. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, this weekend is second Purim. I say second mm. Purim because last month was the actual Purim of Adar. <laughs> uh, that the 12th month. Uh, so Purim is this weekend. Saturday, uh, I think it's, well, it's Friday night to Saturday night, I believe. There's that. I don't know how many of you are having a Purim party. I, I'm, we, we usually do. I'm not sure if we're having one this year, but um, there's that. And uh, if you saw Kevin's comment, he's asking about if we were going to talk about uh, something that he sent me. Every, for as long as I can remember. I mean, it's been a, it's been a year. Uh, every year, there's some sort of, oh, about Passover and how the the Sanhedrin, well, the the new modern Sanhedrin, how the temple the Temple Institute are going to sacrifice a lamb somewhere, and and and, and you're going to see all this crazy news about how that's going to start a uh, an international whatever because you know you know all these Jews are visiting the Temple Mount and they're gonna they're gonna sacrifice a lamb for Passover and it's going to be a, a major ruckus, I mean. So much for freedom of religion, right? And how they can't do that because it'll be an international, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? An international, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, a, what? An international debacle. Something, yeah. It's going to be bad. International something. And, um, and and then and then the red heifer always pops up, and the red heifer is you know it's got a it's it's, it's not a mar- uh, the red heifer actually isn't a biblical marker. It's a Talmudic rabbinical marker. Um, it has very little to no scriptural legitimacy, um, but it always comes up. It, we're gonna we're gonna slaughter a lamb, and it'll be an inc- international incident. That's what I was thinking of. And uh, and then the red heifer thing, and it this happens every year, and it's 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 goofy. It's like it's 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 like they always it's like they want to make every possible Passover to have some sort of prophetic significance of Messiah's return. And, and you know, right? It's crying, it's crying wolf. So when the, when it stinking does happen, no one's going to pay attention. It's bizarre. Lenny, please help me with this. <laughs> yep. There's so many things out there right now. It's just everything's crazy. So all I can tell people is to watch. Yeah, I know. I, I watched the thing that uh, Kevin sent me, but I also saw the Glenn Beck thing. And he's going, how horrible could they slaughter an animal? And I'm going, boy, <laughs> yeah, are you kidding me? They don't even know what's happening. I guarantee you Glenn Beck's a hunter. Yeah. Heels and hunts. How? Oh, what's the difference? Right. And it, it, that kind of surprised me that he had that kind of reaction <clears throat> because he's become more and more acquainted with this biblical stuff, but he's coming from an LDS background too. Mm-hmm. 
you know, his wife. And so the interesting thing is, is that, okay, I, I heard that thing about three or four months ago about the thing in Texas that had the three calves. Yeah, something like three or four, they, yeah. They shipped, shipped them from Texas. Israel. Yeah. Well, all you, the, I think I shared this. I'm going, yeah, it's not biblical. However, most of what we understand of Judaism over there, the stuff they're doing is non-biblical, and there's a bunch of mixture. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's interesting still to watch all their mixtures and what they're going to come up with. Right. If, even if that trigger could be pull, pulled to build the third temple, the reality is, is all they need is an altar. And doesn't so, it, doesn't the heifer have to be born in the land? They can ship them from Texas? You know, I that I don't know. I, I haven't looked that <laughs> up. I, I'll look that up. Yeah, because I I, 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 I always, I'm the kind of guy that's literally going to go and just not bother. I mean, why? Why am I going to bother myself with that? Uh, the there's one, so the much one. other stuff that we can have, that we do have control of, that we need to be doing, that we're not doing. Let's concentrate on that. Oh, yeah. The one thing that's happening right now is Middle East is just as much of a turmoil as it's ever been. The sad part is they are closer to war with Iran. That is something to watch. And that's for all of us to watch because America will be drug into that. And rightly so, maybe that will trigger something we just don't know. All I do know is that so many things are converging at once. And yet, the things that we need to take care of here, he's rocking the church here. He's rocking it. He's Judgment must first come at the house of God. And everything yeah. that's being shaken can be. And we still haven't seen the full-out shaking of what's going on. No. And that's just in our own circles, too, so. Crazy, crazy. I have to say, uh, Chris, Alan did, if you can get it, Alan did a masterful job, masterful job on talking about the false prophet and false prophets in the context of Matthew 24. It was un, it was really good. It's last on, night? Uh, no, last Thursday. It was on YouTube. So we, we posted it on the branch. And it, he did a phenomenal job cool i learned a lot i was taking notes well thanks lenny yeah that was good we're got a lot of feedback what else anybody got anything else Well, next month we'll begin the uh, the feast season. Yes. Don't forget we have a conference coming up. A little Shavuot conference. Kingdom Culture Conference. quiet morning yeah i got to hear a lot i really enjoyed what chris was saying about the and what you really tied it into just with the whole thing of the typology of what would happen when they went through the middle of the sea and just our sinful nature and all that that just that was really really edifying i was listening to that i was like wow Good stuff. And now how all those different representations of how the Lord, he's going to go before us. And, and in, in, in Jesus, man, we have the, we do have life. And we're delivered from all of that stuff. From the enemy, from Egypt, the flesh. Yeah. Evil intentions of our heart. <laughs> So I was listening. I was listening, even though I couldn't talk.
so I don't know. I, I've got I've got nothing else. Chris, save us. Yeah. Be dismissed. <laughs> Just kidding. Hmm. All right. Hey, have you, have you guys heard of what's going on at the border? Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh yeah apparently the stream the supreme court voted against texas ability to uh, defend itself that's yeah, always smart mm. Mm. time to get some chariots round up those bad hombres going to be a very, and I, and I said this last week, it's going to be a very interesting next six, seven, eight months. The bloodbath. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. That's hilarious. Wow. I'm That's sorry. I was so watching weird. Gutfeld last night. I love Gutfeld. And they were just mocking the whole thing. Yeah. When, when Trump said that, just how everybody's going nuts. They can say it, but God forbid we say it. I know, I know. It's crazy, these people. Yes. Okay, we got less than 10 minutes. How about a question? Anybody got a question? Questions, questions? Hey, I, I guess I, I have a question unless one comes in. I had a friend ask recently, they're like, hey, tell me about your diet. You know, I know you stop pork and you don't do shellfish. And so they're asking me, it's like, man, I <laughs> can't wait for your Easter Bunny video. That's funny. Um, something to look forward to. Um, I've been doing that for, what, 15 years? Yes, it's funny. Um, that's how, that's how I, I appreciated them asking and I was asking them why they want to know, you know. And... There was some other people in the room, but it, it just kind of took this, it took this turn, you know, and talking about law and love, we do what oh, he commands, man. his commands are not burdensome, and they're like, well, but like, what about, what about the slot? I said, no, it's not for salvation. We're not slaughtering lambs and, you know, and those are Levitical, so there's no temple, we aren't priests. I'm going to leave but right then it, yeah. But then it got to, well... Why don't you do the one about slaves? You treat your slaves this way, that way. And I'm like, well, I don't own slaves, but it condones own slavery. So why don't, you know, I had no answer. I had, I was like, I, I, I don't, I don't know how to, yeah, of course I don't do the slavery one. Um, but I just, I felt like I got in a pickle. I was like, oh, I don't know what, I don't know what to say. It's amazing to me. The stuff, see, the stuff they come up with. See, again, it's all deflection. They literally have no intention to obey. And so they're going to try and make you, they're going to try and trap you, right? It's, it's, it's disingenuous. It's ludicrous. Um, not every person alive back then owned a slave, dumbass. I mean, right? And it's like, really? Out of God's commandments, that's the one you're thinking of. That's the one that's like preeminent in your mind. And it's and as a and as head of household, that's the one you're most concerned about when it comes to serving God. See what I'm saying? It's like Yeah. I mean it's, I got they're, they're I, fool. I, it's what the Bible determined. That's what that's the def the biblical yeah. definition of a fool. I get the argument. Like yeah. okay, so you're gonna pick and choose which ones you obey, right? And you're like, yeah, oh yeah, you're right kind of like I get that argument but then it's I felt like I did I didn't want to be I don't want to be the guy that like picks and chooses what you follow and do absolutely but I, I I didn't have an answer I was just like right 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 okay I, uh, I don't know well it the 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 general breakdown is we can only do maybe a third of them because right. not all not all the tour instructions apply to me or you Right. There's there's a whole bunch. The, the the majority, there's actual graphs and charts out there. The majority of these laws are 
temple Levitical related. I'm not a Levite and there's no temple. So they don't apply to me. I'm not a farmer. Those don't apply to me. I'm not a leper. Those don't apply to me. I'm not a sojourner in the land. Those don't apply to me. I'm not a woman. Those don't apply to me. I'm not picking and choosing. They just don't apply to me. So the ones that do apply to me, I will obey and, 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 and follow. I'm, and I'm again, not, not everybody was a slave owner, so that's, that doesn't even apply. That only applied I'll, to those that own slaves. I'll be the alternate voice. Alan... I'm not an Israelite. They don't apply to me. That's not true. It to, says one law for all men, look. including the oh. sojourner among you. Gotcha. Sojourn. Well, sojourners, shouldn't we let immigrants in? Without ah, there's rules. There's laws. Obey the law of the land. There's a legal way to get in and out of any country, except for ours, apparently. Well, we need more laws. We need more. No, we don't. We don't need immigration reform. Obey the stinking laws that already exist. Same with gun control. We have laws. Obey them. But they don't obey them. Are you trying to trigger me, Chris? What's going on, bro? Um, not doing a good job, obviously. You're not triggered yet. You're still calm. You're filled with the <laughs> I'm working on spirit. It. I'm working on it. It's a, it's it's my new uh, my new 60th birthday resolution, not to allow myself to be triggered at all ever again. See, but yeah, it, it it was inc it was so like on one side I was encouraged because they were asking about it, which mm -hmm. is like a testimony to like choices I made years ago are whatever it was 2020, you know, are finally pricking the antennas of people close to me, you know, like, right, right, it's right. like, but then it was also like, oh man, there's just seems so, I, I felt the diversion tactic. Yeah. Like, like, why isn't it okay for me to do what I think? Cause you're asking me about it. And for some reason you're, but yet it's this diversion and I'm fine if you don't want to do that, but don't, yeah. I well, just felt I felt trapped. That was that absolutely, for it. and you should have felt trapped because that's what they were doing you, doing to you. Here's here's mm -hmm. one when you come if it comes up again with the slave, just go. Well, did you know there was allowance every seven years those slaves were released and let go, and if they and if the slave wanted to stay, they were marked with an earring, and they became a bond servant. Oh wait, have you not heard that you're supposed to be a bond servant as a as a follower of Jesus? Now what? See, you always got, you answer a fool by his folly. Don't let him think he's smarter than you. That's what Proverbs says. That's what I do. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good reminder. Yeah. Answer a fool in his Paul, folly. Paul talks, Paul talks about that, right? That's New Testament, bondservant. Wait, he's talking about Old Testament law. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Why? I thought, I thought we ripped out the Old Testament when Jesus came. Yeah. You know, that's like, you know what, if you want to have a serious conversation about this, awesome. But right now, I know what you're doing, and you're not smarter than I am, and you're not smarter than God, and you're wrong, and you're being, well, an a-hole. You know, it's like, well, I don't talk to you like that. I don't treat you like that. Why are you treating me like that? Oh, so we're not actually friends. So this is how you really feel about me. Okay, I can work with that. But this is who you are, and now I'm going to address you accordingly. Uh, there's no, you know what? We don't have 20 freaking years to figure this out, people. We just don't. We don't have 20 years to figure it out. And we don't have 20 years to coddle these, these asinine fools. We don't. If you don't want to obey, if you don't want to keep the covenants, awesome. That's my favorite part about Christianity. You don't have to do this. But you know what? If you're going to dis disrespect me regarding my obedience to the scriptures, Mr. Christian, oh man. It's on. I'm from L.A. Frickin' street rules apply. This sheep has teeth, and I bite. That was a good one, man. That was really good. You're listening to... Com I, can, I can trigger myself. I don't need your help. 
You're listening to Chameleon Church. Two over the top for Tuesday morning. You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. The views and opinions expressed during our broadcasts are solely those of the broadcast producers, hosts, and or guests, etc., and are not necessarily the views or opinions of the Travelog Network, its sponsors, or affiliates.